With online content specifically, we're always moving obnoxiously fast. There's always another project to finish and never with an adequate amount of time to do it the way that we really want. So I'm always looking for tools that can add little extras quickly to get our projects over the finish line. If you make consistent content for YouTube, TikTok, or similar, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So today we're looking at a new set of transitions, effects, and animations that do exactly that. I have a handful of clips here that I pulled from Artlist in this really shitty looking graphic that we're going to make un -shitty. The idea is that we're going to use these new first party effects in Premiere to add a little extra to these clips very quickly. Adobe is a partner on this episode and I have been a Premiere Pro user for at least 15 years. And with this latest update from Premiere Pro, we are getting over 90 new effects, transitions and animations. And honestly, it's long overdue, especially the transitions. I've never been a huge fan of Adobe's built-in transitions but with this update, we're getting some really nice ones, but we'll get back to that. As always, we have the effects here inside the effects panel, but even better, we have this custom dashboard for them as well, which makes it a lot easier to work with. I can click on effects and get them all or just each section on its own. At first glance, I wasn't doing backflips over these effects. They seem kind of common, but they're really nice once you dig in. So let's take this one here. I gotta admit, I rolled my eyes at a mosaic effect, but there's a lot of flexibility with this look to get some interesting results. If I just tweak a handful of things, I end up with this cool stained glass vibe, or I could duplicate my clip, take the effect off the top version, and throw it into Multiply. Add an adjustment layer with Lumetri to rebalance my exposure, and we have something similar but toned down. Or add some movement into my mosaic effect, then add another clean version of the clip on top, throw that into Lighten, then I'll grab this new Focus Blur to blur our edges, crank up the chromatic aberration here, and we get a trippy look. Now if we turn that middle clean clip on, we get these odd textures in just the blur area that move with the image. So if I drop that into a clip like this, we're getting even more of that effect in all the moving objects and lights. Which is obviously very stylistic, but I could see using for things like graphics or music videos. But let's look at that focus blur next. If we take a shot like this, and I really want to focus in on the man's eye, I'll toss this on, shift the position, then when I adjust the height and width, I get these identifiers to where my blur is actually affecting. Now I can add some feather, some chromatic aberration, and now we're drawn much more heavily toward his eye. And it's a very nice blur, helped a lot by that chromatic aberration, which I love that chromatic aberration is built in here. In fact, it's built into several of the effects, which, you know. Thank you. We've got two other great blur effects here too. The standard blur, which is nice and smooth with solid options. Then this excellent bokeh blur. If we blur this out right here, you see we get the definition of the water drops on the glass. And if I drop my roundness to zero, I could drop my edges to shift from the circle to a square down to a triangle if I want. I can also adjust the diffraction fringe to hollow out the center or lens distortion, which you can see a bit better with the square bokeh. And the last blur on the list that I'll look at here is compound blur. I love compound blurs. Basically, it's a blur that is being driven by another video. Brighter areas blur more while darker areas blur less. So to show that very specifically, let's take this snow asset on black, place it below our clip, and we get this crazy look. Of course, we can adjust, make it more subtle if we want, or try it on a different shot like this one, since every shot will feel entirely different. I love how it's interacting with the flashing light here, and since it's a darker shot, we're getting a more subtle result as well. Or we could get other assets to drive the blur like this here. This is far more chaotic, so when we throw it on, we're getting this glitchy blurred mess, which is pretty cool. But again, we do have this surprise me button that we've seen on every plugin. And the best way to show this is with one of the glow effects. Another one of my favorite effects is this echo glow effect. If I add it to this shot here, you immediately see what it does, but it's all very customizable for all kinds of looks. You have steps here to add more or less of that echo, speed and spin. And since there are so many possible combinations, it's perfect to show off this surprise me button, which really is just a randomizer. So every time I click, I'm getting an all new look. And to be honest, a lot of the times that I'm using effects, I'm sort of exploring to see what I can get out of the image with that specific effect. Effect. So this very quick way of shifting through different possibilities is really great to move fast toward inspiration. Obviously, this is another very stylized effect that has a lot of really cool looks and is very music video feeling to me. But again, you have this surprise me button on every single one of these. So if we go back to the bokeh blur, we can tap to see different looks here, or we could toss light leaks on here and shift through those as well. It's a very simple idea, but shockingly useful. 
One of the main ways that I use effects like this is for graphics. Again, I'm always against the clock, so often I don't have time to really dig into proper After Effects projects and customize something the way I'd really want. So I'll take a graphic like this, which is not even half done and looks horrible right now, then I'll pile on some effects to transform that into something more solid. To do this very quickly, I'll start by adding a bokeh blur. I'm going to keep this subtle just to take that digital edge off. Then I'll add an instance of light leaks, and I'm going to hit surprise me until I get something that I like. Then I'll make that a bit more subtle. Next, I'll drop on Lumetri Color just to add some contrast back in. And this is feeling too green overall for me, so I'll add in the new channel mixer and shift this to give me a bit more more of a blue look. Then I'm going to add two instances of Wonder Glow. The first just gives me a subtle halation type glow on our text, and the second I'll shift to give us a bit of a streaking glow off the text. After that, I'll add a focus blur effect to soften the edges, and I'm gonna keyframe the position. I'll shift until only making night is legible, then have it shift to reveal the rest of the text. After that, I'll add my vignette to bring everything in and notch down the edges even more. And finally, to glue everything together and dirty it up a little bit, I'll add some noise. And then there we go. If we look at the before and after side by side, the difference really is wild. Another effect I use constantly is a camera shake, but now we have it built right into Premiere, and it works exactly how you would think, from a subtle handheld look like this to something more intense like this here, which makes me think of a space re-entry. And of course, we have our surprise me button up here to shift through different vibes very quickly. And finally, we have the most needed upgrade with transitions. I tend to lean toward a handful of style of transitions, but there are a lot of nice elements here that I could see myself branching out to a bit. But things like a simple slide in and out is often my preference with stuff like Film Riot. So I'll drop push on here and I just shift the length of the transition to adjust the speed. And like everything else, we have Surprise Me here and a ton of options. So I can adjust the easing, the direction, add stretch, motion blur, rolling shutter, which is awesome, and my favorite thing, chromatic aberration. I can also change the slide to have the image leave revealing the one below it, or have the new image slide over the old, or have them swipe like I did before. And the same goes for all the different transitions we have here. You have a ton of options that then have a lot of parameters to customize. I used to use Motion Duck for a lot of these kinds of transitions, and I don't see me doing that anymore. There is more here, like the other motion and title effects, and everything is very fast with no lag, and that's because this is all GPU accelerated, so it'll play in real time after you drag and drop. And like I said, this does come with the latest update of Premiere, and there are other updates as well, like the audio waveforms that update dynamically as you make edits. Hardware acceleration for H.264 and HEVC decode on NVIDIA Blackwell GPUs, as well as support for Canon Cinema Raw Light and Airy Raw HDE. What do you think? Will you be using these? canceling your third-party plugins, don't care either way, let us know in the comments below. And if you like this episode, do us a solid like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you're notified when we put up more content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.